Hi, I'm Clive from Unsung Hero Guitars. Today I'd like to walk you through a refurbishment project I recently did on an Ibanez Sabre 440. Uh, a friend on Facebook contacted me and said that this guitar was of particular sentimental value to him. It's, uh, it was his first proper electric from way back in the day. Um, but unfortunately it's not seen an awful lot of love and attention over recent years. So he sent it to me to, to see what I could do. So it all started with a Facebook message which contained this photograph and the question, what would you do if I sent you this? Now it's quite clear that this guitar had seen better days. Um, its owner openly acknowledged that. Um, I guess it's one of those things that gets put further back the pecking order as other instruments come along in time. But So to save embarrassment and for the purposes of this video, we'll, we'll refer to him as Al. And as you can see from the fly pass, there's lots of dust and lots of corrosion. There's mold on the fretboard and broken string. So it's pretty clear that this uh, had been sorely lacking some TLC, but that's the whole reason why Al decided to send it to me. So the video has given you a good overview of the scale of the work on this guitar. So unfortunately it's not that clear, so I'll just get some, some nice stills in play here. So we can see the dust and a little bit of rust and what have you all around the top end of the uh, nut. And some closer shots here of uh, the mold corrosion on the frets. So moving into the body, you can see again, lots of dust and rust on the pickups. Uh, I'm guessing this has been on a wall hanger or maybe sat on a stand um, because of the way that, that all the dust is collected on the sort of the horizontal surfaces. There's lots of corrosion in and around the Floyd Rose trim. And that needs cleaning up under there as well. The body actually isn't in too bad a shape, there's just a few gouges on the bottom edge which would need some attention. And onto the back plates, you can see again a little bit of surface mould there. Here is the uh, top strap button and you can see a trail of glue, obviously where that's been fastened back in at some point. And moving into the neck, you can see there are a number of little indents and dings and scratches and scuffs. So yeah, I lost count actually, but um, so yeah, they would all need some attention so that it feels good in the hands. So now we're starting to get into taking this guitar apart so we can see all the individual components. Uh, here's all the headstock hardware, tuners and nut etc. And there it all is after it's been polished up. And next up we're going to have a look at the Floyd Rose trim system which has been completely taken apart so that every component can be cleaned up and lubricated and put back to uh, pretty much as close to new as we can get. Now here's an interesting comparison, <laughs> speaks for itself, I need to say no more on that. Next we're going to be getting into the work on the fretboard. You can see here it's had a light scrape to remove the mould and any surface scratches and what have you. There it's being checked to ensure that the board is perfectly straight and that the frets are equally straight and flat. A little bit of work needed to be done to get them levelled as you can see there and that's some recrowning in process with a hand file. That's the work part way through. And then we get into the polishing to make everything super smooth. So with the neck actually off the guitar, all the marks on the back were addressed and it had a light sanding uh, followed by a coat of gunstock oil just to reseal it. And you can see here, this is some re-nourishment taking place on the fretboard itself. The electronics are actually in good shape. Not much needed there, just a general service to clean the contacts. But Al wanted some beefier single coils fitted, so we went for some Seymour Duncan custom shop and kept the original covers. So with all the issues addressed and everything cleaned up, looking super shiny, it was then a case of reassembly and into a fully comprehensive setup. Here's a reminder of how we were before the work and after. And another comparison here, this, uh, this really shows how it's been brought back from the edge. And uh, yeah, got to be pleased with that.
Here's another look at the gouges which are on the bottom of the guitar and with some localised repair work it's now looking a lot tidier. There's the back plates all cleaned up and you'll see every single screw head has been polished as the strap button there and that piece of glue residue has been removed. So yeah, all the hardware gets a, a full polish in a complete work through like this. And you see there, that's the neck at the end of the work. And there's the tuners looking pristine once more. Now it's fair to say that this particular project did present one or two challenges along the way, but overall it was a really enjoyable guitar to work on. Uh, it plays great, feels great now, and looking at the results, it's super rewarding for me. But the most important thing of all, of course, is that it's now back with Al. He's happy, he's delighted that he's, he's got the guitar back that he initially fell, fell in love with, and um, yeah, that's what it's all about.